Homo sapiens were not the only species of human alive towards the end of the Pleistocene epoch. Famously, we also shared the planet with the Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, a species of archaic human characterized by their short, stocky statures, barrel-shaped bodies, and protruding brow ridges. Our two species shared the planet for roughly 150,000 years, until the Neanderthals disappeared from the face of the Earth, only to re-emerge thousands of years later in archaeological excavations. In a world dominated by Homo sapiens in the 21st century, it is amazing to imagine a world where more than one species of human exist. But in the Pleistocene, in those early days of humanity, there were not two, but three species of human sharing the mammoth steppe together. Our species were accompanied by not only the Neanderthals, but the Denisovans, an archaic species of human lost to the world, only to be re-examined and identified officially by science in 2010, based on remains that were discovered years earlier. The Denisovans represent a species who were distinctly different to the Neanderthals and us, and to this day, comparatively little is known about them when we look at what we know about the Neanderthals. They remain a mysterious species of archaic human, of whom much is left to be discovered. In today's video, we will be taking a look at what we do know about some of our closest cousins, the Denisovans. We will look at the discoveries made by science so far, narrowing down the individuals that have been uncovered from caves across the world. We will examine their diets, lifestyle, and culture, observing how these early people lived and survived in the harsh environments they called home. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through time to meet the Denisovans, our most mysterious cousins. Many Denisovan remains have been unearthed across Central and Southeast Asia. Their known range spans from Southern Russia at its most northern point, through to Mongolia and China, and down to what is now the northernmost regions of Laos. The most reliable paleoarchaeological site for uncovering remains linked to ancient Denisovans is the Denisova Cave in southern Russia, the entrance of which can be found in the Altai Mountains Bashalaksky Range. Both the cave and the ancient humans discovered within have received their names Denisovans or Homo Denisova from a man by the name of Denis, or Dionysi, a hermit practicing the traditional rituals and beliefs of the old Russian Orthodox Church in the 18th century, who spent the remainder of his days living in the cave alone. Dionysi couldn't have known it at the time, but he was living in one of the most significant paleoarchaeological sites in all of Asia. The cave became significant in the eyes of science in the 1970s, when the first remains of archaic humans were uncovered from within the cave's entrance. These early specimens were not described or named until much later on but their ages have been determined to be roughly 125,000 years old at the youngest and 180,000 years at the oldest. This was determined using both thermoluminescence dating within the sediments of the cave and radiocarbon dating on charcoal present in the region. 
These early discoveries were made by Nikolai Ovidov, a Russian paleontologist who at the time of his initial expedition to Denisova Cave was searching for extinct dog species, such as the dire wolves that roamed Eurasia at the same time as our early ancestors. Although discoveries were made subsequently throughout the 1980s, Denisovan research only really began to heat up in 2008. A team of archaeologists, led by Michael Shunkov from the Russian Academy of Sciences, entered the cave nearly 40 years after the initial discovery and made a fantastic find. A bone from a finger belonging to a young female hominin, dated to around roughly 70,000 years ago, proved that Denisova Cave was in use by early people for thousands of years. It was this finger bone that introduced the world to the third species of human living along the mammoth steppe in the late Pleistocene. The woman the finger bone belonged to was initially named X-Woman. According to matrilineal mitochondrial DNA, which, when examined, proved that this was a new, distinct species of human in the Homo genus, genetically distinct from both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, yet living in the same place and time in natural history. Off the back of this discovery, the Denisovans were reintroduced to the human world. Further discoveries still were made in the year 2019 when Katerina Duca, a Greek archaeologist, used the means of radiocarbon dating to analyze an array of specimens from the Denisova cave, determining that some of them lived as long ago as 120,000 years. Moreover, Denisovan DNA was discovered in some of the cave's older sediments that date back to 217,000 years ago. Of the entire Denisovan skeleton, we have thus far discovered altogether scattered fingers, teeth, jaw bones, leg bones, cranial bones, and possible arm bones. The entire Denisovan skeleton is still waiting to be discovered, but further study is needed before we can determine exactly what these people looked like. The Denisovans are still very much shrouded in mystery and intrigue, and in comparison to what we know of modern humans and ancient Neanderthals, the Denisovans have only just begun to reveal their secrets to science. We know from their final resting places of their sparse remains that the Denisovans were a distinct population of archaic humans that could be found across Siberia, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia, and that they, like their Neanderthal cousins, favored the caves that were dotted across the hills and mountains of the Mammoth Steppe, the largest continuous biome the world has ever seen. By looking at the details of the bones themselves, however, scientists are able to discern a little more information about what specifically the Denisovans looked like. The finger bone that was used to help discern the Denisovans as a new species, for instance, is within the same proportions as a Homo sapiens woman, and our two species were likely very much similar in size. The multiple Denisovan teeth that we have recovered from the caves in Asia, however, tell a different story. Denisovan teeth were much larger than those of modern-day humans, more comparable in size to the teeth of early hominids, such as the Australopithecines of Africa. Their teeth were flattened, and their lower jaws receded in a more extreme manner 
than the jaws of modern-day humans. By using facial reconstruction technology on the facial and cranial remains that have been discovered thus far, scientists have managed to create a basic impression of what the average Denisovan may have looked like. The results of the facial reconstruction provide a hominid that looked uncannily similar to many depictions of Homo neanderthalensis, and the species were likely very closely related. Their faces in general may have protruded at the brow ridge and mouth sections of the face, and they boasted broad, large noses, likely for filtering the cold air of their mountain steppe environments. Much like the Neanderthals, their overall facial form and structure was that of many early humans, with a sloping forehead and a long, flat skull. Furthermore, estimates of the whole Denisovan body show a hominid that is broad and barrel-shaped, like the Neanderthals, with broad shoulders, tough ribs, and wide hips that would have given these people a tough, stocky stature. From what scientists have managed to discern about the Denisovan genome, many genes are present that are most closely associated with traits such as dark skin, dark hair, and dark eyes in modern-day humans. We can assume that, due to these genes, the Denisovans would have on average had much darker skin than that of Neanderthals, with typically brown eyes and hair. Amazingly, the Denisovans also possessed a gene found commonly in Tibetan people, which can assist with coping with low oxygen levels when at high altitude. Other genes known in Denisovans include genes that affect body fat distribution, with a proportionately high number of genes that are associated with bones and body tissues. They possess less of the genes, which in Neanderthals and modern humans are expressed in the brain. These mysterious cousins may have been marginally less intelligent than us and our Neanderthal relatives, but bulkier and more heavily built than both. Like many topics in relation to the Denisovans, further research is needed to paint an accurate picture of what an average Denisovan may have actually looked like in life. While we know for certain what ancient humans looked like, and we have a good idea of what your average Neanderthal looked like, we only have estimations for the Denisovans. Maybe going forward, we will eventually be able to unearth our cousins in greater detail. To date, remains from around nine distinct Denisovan individuals are known to science. These remains are scattered across the three paleoarchaeological sites known to harbor Denisovan bones in Russia, China, and Laos and discoveries are still being made. The finger fragment discovered in 2008 from the juvenile female known as X-Woman came from the individual's fifth fingertip, and the bone is thought to have come from a 13-year-old girl. It is a tiny fragment, but one that sparked a huge revelation in the paleoarchaeological world upon its discovery. With so few remains, it is impossible to tell how this girl died or why she was in Denisova cave. But perhaps she was being cared for after an injury, or maybe the cave's population were attacked and killed by predators. The Denisovan teeth known to science come from a variety of individuals and represent a range of different tooth positionings. 
two third upper molars are known from two adult men, as well as a second lower molar from a young female, and a first lower molar from a young child. The mandible, or jawbone, discovered in 1980, was the first Denisovan bone to be described from outside of the Denisova cave, having been found in the Baishia Karst cave, close to the edge of the Tibetan Plateau, in China's Jiaha County. It is unknown what specific age range or sex the bone belongs to, but due to the location, has been named the Jiaha Mandible. This bone was actually happened on by chance by a Tibetan Buddhist monk who was meditating in the cave at the time. The Long Bone, by far the largest Denisovan bone known to date, is either an arm or a leg. Scientists still cannot be sure which. This came from a 13-year-old girl and was unearthed from Denisova Cave in 2012. It did not, however, come from the same individual as the 13-year-old girl's finger bone, due to the fact that carbon dating proved that there were tens of thousands of years between the existence of the two remains. Finally, the cranial bone fragment, discovered in 2019 in Denisova Cave, is from an individual of undetermined age or sex and represents a segment of the parietal bone, one of two bones that form the side and roof of the cranium of the skull. With luck, more remains will be unearthed in the future and we will have a complete Denisovan skeleton to go off for any forthcoming research. The Denisova Cave is not only a hotbed for physical Denisovan specimens, it also bears much evidence of things these early people left behind. A plethora of valuable artifacts have been uncovered from within the cave's interior, many of which were composed of stone. Lithic cores, for example, are prevalent. These were pieces of stone or flint that the Denisovans had purposefully shaped to fulfill a need. These cores came in the form of stone scrapers, perhaps for cutting meat or tanning animal hides. Denticulate lithic cores which were jagged at one end, perhaps a means of cutting wood or breaking rock, and Lavalawa cores, which were shaped and pointed, likely used for puncturing flesh of prey items. The tools present in the cave date from a range of 280,000 years at the oldest to around 14,000 years at the youngest, over the years, Denisova Cave was populated by a large number of individual Denisovans who called it their own. It would appear that the Denisovans also had their eyes on the means of decoration and slightly more complex craftsmanship, however. Stone burins have been uncovered from deep within the cave a type of small handheld tool which would have acted much like a modern day engraving utensil with a handle and point. The Denisovans used these burins to scratch markings away at bone and the walls of their caves, perhaps creating patterns or markings on their belongings. Chisels have also been uncovered from the cave which the Denisovans would have used to chip away at stone and wood, allowing for a great degree of control over shaping their natural environment. As the years went on, the Denisovans progressed their mastery over their environment with a wider range of tools made from the bones of animals. 
Not only were the items crafted from bone more intricate and advanced than the earlier materials found in the cave, they were also used for more personal ornamentation rather than crafting. From the Denisova cave alone, investigators have uncovered rings made from ivory, pendants made from the teeth of deer, and needles made from bone, which could have been used to stitch animal hide together to form basic, loose-fitting clothing. The Denisovans also made jewelry from stone and marble. Rings and necklaces have been uncovered from the cave composed of these materials. There is, however, the possibility that homo sapien individuals may have crafted these items. The time that they have been dated to, roughly 55,000 years ago, coincides with the time that modern humans were migrating across Asia and Siberia. So it is unclear who exactly made these more advanced tools. The jury is still out. It could have been either one of our species. The Denisovans may actually have beaten both ourselves and the Neanderthals to the earliest creation of art. Archaeological finds discovered in 2021 near the Qusang Hot Springs in what is now modern Tibet in China provide us with not only the earliest known occupation by a human species of the Tibetan Plateau, but a series of findings which could potentially be revolutionary. Roughly 200,000 years ago, a group of young Denisovans wandered through the region and left behind various handprints and footprints in the sediment forever etched into the rock of the modern world. Due to the size of the prints, it can be assumed that they were made by Denisovan children, who were perhaps playing or experimenting with patterns and shapes. The children took care to overlap their prints only slightly and focus them in only a small area of the sediment. There is also evidence of movement within the sediment. When these Denisovans made these marks in the ancient mud, they purposefully moved their digits around within. These prints are the oldest of their kind in the archaeological record, and the next known examples didn't appear in said record for another 40,000 years. If it was indeed, these young Denisovans' intentions to experiment with impressions and prints. This can be considered the first example of intentional art in the entire natural world, an event that would set a precedent for hundreds of thousands of years to come. As for the average Denisovans' diet, it would appear that they shared similar traits with many of the groups of our Neanderthal cousins out on the Pleistocene mammoth steppe, in the sense that they had high-protein diets obtained from eating the meat of large animals. The Denisovans appeared to have diets rich in starch, as well as fatty acids, implying that meat was an important and noticeably large part of their average diets. Denisovans are thought to have hunted or scavenged in order to obtain this meat, and out on the mammoth steppe, there was plenty of it to go around. We know from the jewelry in the Denisova cave that the Denisovans interacted with and hunted wild deer, so species such as red deer and elk made up a large portion of their diet. These iconic mammals of the wilderness were plentiful across the mammoth steppe towards the end of the Pleistocene epoch, and the Denisovans were well equipped to hunt them down with intelligence and deadly tools. Boar and bison may have proved slightly more difficult to hunt. 
But these large animals made up a good part of the Denisovan menu too. Most spectacularly of all, there is evidence to suggest that the Denisovans actually went after the namesake of the mammoth steppe themselves. As woolly mammoths migrated and grazed across the grasslands of Eurasia, they would have come into contact with groups of Denisovans, who would have risked their life and limb to feed themselves on such a massive animal. In order to do this, they would have had to utilize complex hunting strategies and a wide repertoire of hunting tools. While many of these hunts were likely fatal for unprepared groups of Denisovans, those who managed to take down a mighty woolly mammoth were nourished for weeks at a time on the meat of these huge animals which would have surely helped a family group through the harsh Pleistocene winters. Due to the cool temperature of the Denisova cave, in what is now modern Russia, scientists have been able to preserve and sequence mitochondrial DNA from the specimens that died within its walls. Through intensive study, they were able to determine that the DNA of the Denisovans differed to our DNA by 385 bases of the 16,500 in total. On the other hand, Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA only differs from ours by just over 200 bases in total. This was initially thought to mean that Neanderthals who split from our common ancestors' line of evolution around 600,000 years ago at the earliest, are more closely related to modern humans than the Denisovans were. Therefore, the Denisovans are an older, more archaic species than the Neanderthals, and they split from our common ancestors' line of evolution just over one million years ago beating the Neanderthals to the scene by around 400,000 years. Further studies surrounding the study of our three species' nuclear DNA have, however, proved that Denisovans and Neanderthals were more closely related to one another than they were to Homo sapiens. These studies have pointed to the Denisovans and Neanderthals having split from modern humans just over 800,000 years ago, and then splitting again from each other around 640,000 years ago. The closest ancestor to the Neanderthals and the Denisovans is thought to be Homo heidelbergensis, a species from the Middle Pleistocene that has caused much confusion for taxonomists and paleoanthropologists over the years due to the disputes over its classification. The debate continues. As more studies are undertaken, more theories and dates surrounding the evolution of Denisovans and their relationship to Neanderthals and modern humans arise. Famously, modern humans interbred with other species of archaic humans. This is well known of the Neanderthals, but modern studies have proved that early Denisovans also bred with Homo sapiens, creating a diverse gene pool. Hybridization was reasonably common for hominids out on the mammoth steppe and many interactions between species were likely non-confrontational. For instance, 17% of the Denisovan genome, known from Denisova Cave, has been matched with that of Neanderthals living in the same location. The two species spent a lot of time together and evidently interbred often, and some of the known Denisovan specimens 
are actually the children of a Denisovan Neanderthal coupling. Furthermore, 4% of the overall Denisovan genome is identified to belong to a completely unidentified hominin, which may contribute to the difficulties in pinning down exactly when and how Denisovans evolved. There's a good chance that the DNA present in the Denisovan genome that has not been identified may belong to either Homo longi, a species known from the Songhua River in China from the same point in time, or Homo doliensis, known from China's Dali County. Each and any of these species could have interacted and interbred, and due to the migration of the Denisovan south into Southeast Asia, it is very possible that a variety of hybrid hominin children were present on the scene throughout the middle to late Pleistocene. The highest percentages of Denisovan DNA in modern humans is typically found in Australian aboriginals, people from the island nations of the South Pacific, people from Indonesia, and the Jahai people of Malaysia. It is not, however, prevalent in people from East Asia. This has led scientists to discern that the Denisovans may have migrated beyond the Asian mainland, crossing over into Oceania, specifically parts of Australia, Polynesia, and the island bridges of the Malaysian and Indonesian archipelagos. The highest degree of interbreeding and interspecies contact between Homo sapiens and the Denisovans is thought to have occurred somewhere around Wallacea or Sunda due to the discovery of the Tolian girl's remains dating back to around 7,200 years ago who was carrying large percentages of Denisovan DNA. It is thought that the obtaining of Denisovan genes may have had a variety of impacts on the human body. Denisovan genes may have helped our early ancestors to acclimatize to the colder environments in Eurasia once they had migrated out of their African homeland. Denisovan genes are typically associated with helping people survive at higher altitudes and low oxygen environments, as well as fat distribution and various traits that impact the sense of smell. It is even thought that the Denisovan genes transferred into the human genome all those thousands of years ago may have helped modern humans tough out the symptoms of the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Due to the fact that Denisovans occupied a large range, spanning from the north to the south of Asia, they inhabited a wide range of environments and habitats, and would have met an incredibly diverse array of organisms along their way. Out on the mammoth steppe, the Denisovans would have been met with a vast, expansive environment of plains and hills. Tough grasses, resilient to the cold climate of the north, would have grown beneath their feet. And in the winter, freezing temperatures would bring thick coverings of snow and brutal winds. In sparse patches of land, Rocky outcrops and mountains would have ejected from the land, providing these early men and women with the caves they depended on for shelter and warmth. Much needed respite from the harsh climate of the steppe. In certain areas, large lakes would have blossomed out between the rivers, where the Denisovans would have been able to collect a reliable source of fresh water to drink. Scatterings of pine forests in the north and temperate woodlands in the south would have allowed their animal prey to hide from the elements and predators of the steppe. Out on the steppe, 
large herds of grazing herbivores would have evolved in the Pleistocene, perfectly adapted to making the most of the tough vegetation growing on the ground. Herds of antelope and bison would have gathered seasonally and would have been hunted by the Denisovans out on the plains in the long grass. Towards the forests, boar and deer would have gathered to browse on the softer vegetation of the woodland or sift food from the leaf litter of the forest floor. Unfamiliar but spectacular animals would have been present across the steppe around the same time the Denisovans were evolving too. Gigantic deer species would have proved a difficult yet rewarding hunt, whereas even the toughest of Denisovan hunters would need to be wary around hunting an adult woolly rhinoceros. Occasionally, great mammoth herds would have roamed across the steppe, surely one of the most awe-inspiring sights in all of nature, which would have given the Denisovans another risky chance at obtaining food. When roaming the woods, tall grasses, or mountain ranges of the steppe, however, it was very rarely a safe place to be for a Denisovan. Cave lions and wolves, as well as cave hyenas, would have hunted in packs, larger and more powerful than their contemporary cousins. Bears, too, of both the brown and cave varieties, would have been very dangerous for the unprepared. As the Denisovans expanded their territory south, both the environments and the fauna of Asia would have changed. As they marched south towards the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau, they would have adapted to hunt various goat or sheep species that called the regions home. Barals, Tars, and Takins, for instance, would have lived alongside yaks and wild cattle. Big cats were a major threat here. Amur leopards, snow leopards, and tigers would have stalked the land, more than capable of picking off a Denisovan or two for a quick meal. Extinct megafauna towards the south end of eastern Eurasia would have been represented by the magnificent Elasmotherium, a species related to modern rhinoceroses, once thought to have one massive horn of keratin. In reality, they would have looked a lot like a modern Indian rhinoceros, with a flat, domed horn instead of a long, sharp one. Still, it would have been wise for the Denisovans to steer clear of these bulky herbivores if unprepared for a dangerous hunt. Finally, as the Denisovans spread out towards Southeast Asia, they would have encountered environments that were incomparably lush in the face of the bitter cold of the mammoth steppe. The threat of tigers and leopards would have persisted accompanied by that of large crocodilians and venomous snakes. But after making it through the bamboo forests of southern China, the Denisovans would have found themselves in the tropical regions of what is now Laos, a lush green world of hot jungles and torrential rain. The Denisovans living here would have been spoiled for choice, a wide range of food sources would have opened up to them upon their migration to these new, strange realms. The world was seemingly theirs for the taking. What could go wrong? The Denisovans are obviously no longer with us, but what caused them to disappear from the face of the earth forever? The likeliest explanation for this comes sadly from us. As the Denisovans expanded their territories out over ancient Asia, 
It wasn't long before early Homo sapien groups started to covet these regions for themselves. A few separate migrations of humans into Asia resulted in an indirect clash between our ancestors and their Denisovan cousins, which would ultimately prove a disaster for the latter. As the Homo sapien groups moved into the Denisovans' territory, they worked their way through a lot of resources. Food, shelter, and land were all taken up by the quickly advancing modern humans, who were very well equipped to mold these strange new environments to their exact wishes. The Denisovans, as intelligent as they were, could not compete with the encroaching threat of multiple human species in the region and ultimately met their end. A decline in resources meant that there was simply not enough food to go around for both species. And it was us, the modern humans, who had managed to make the better tools to cope with the lack of resources. Eventually, with the disappearance of the Neanderthals of the north and the various forest-dwelling species of the south, Homo sapiens were alone on planet Earth as the sole hominin survivor. It wasn't long before our ancestors would conquer the rest of the planet. It's a strange thought to imagine life alongside more than one species of human today, but one that would surely be extremely interesting to experience. What would have happened to the culture of both the Denisovans and the Neanderthals if they were successful in surviving the expanse of modern man? Could they have survived up to the modern day, creating their own unique culture and art? How would our species have interacted later on down the line? Unfortunately, we will never know. And the answers to these questions are as mysterious as the very existence of the Denisovans themselves. All we have left of our Denisovan cousins are their bones and a selection of their impacts upon this world. As amazing as they were, we know relatively nothing about them. Perhaps going forward, we will be able to learn more about these early people and how they lived across the vast wild expanses of ancient Asia.